Hello, my name is Melanie Reed, and I've accepted Professor Vasco Pereira da Silva's challenge. And today I'm going to talk about the impact of autonomous driving and artificial intelligence on road surveillance, evidence collection, and criminal prosecutions of traffic violations. And I'd like to start with uh, a particular event that occurred on March 18th, 2018 at 10 p.m. The Tempe police and fire departments were called to the scene of a car accident and a pedestrian fatality in Tempe, Arizona. Upon arrival, the police learned that Rafaela Vasquez, an automated vehicle operator for Uber since June 2017, had been in the driver's seat of a Volvo XC90 SUV that was equipped with a fully automated driving system. The pedestrian, Elaine Hertzberg, had attempted to cross a darkened stretch of road while pushing her bicycle. And the vehicle on a test run noticed Hertzberg via radar for 5.6 seconds before impact. But because she was not riding her bike, but merely walking beside it, the vehicle's radar system only registered her first as an unknown object, then a car, then a bicycle with varying predictions as to where the object slash car bicycle may go next. The National Transportation Safety Board investigators later learned that Uber's technology in the car did not have the capability to classify an object as a pedestrian unless that object was near a crosswalk and Hertzberg had not been in the crosswalk. And records from the streaming service Hulu also revealed that Vasquez, the backup driver, was watching the show, the reality show, The Voice, on her cell phone for 12.5 seconds before the crash and did not hit the brakes until after the car struck Hertzberg. So NTSB investigators pieced the evidence together using the car's data to determine that the car was traveling 40 miles per hour along the eight-line road. They concluded the probable cause of the crash was the failure of the vehicle operator to monitor the driving environment and the operation of the automated driving system because she was visually distracted throughout the trip by her personal cell phone. And Uber didn't adequately recognize the risk of automation complacency and they didn't develop countermeasures to control the risk of vehicle operator disengagement. So, about two years later, August 2020, a Maricopa County grand jury charged Vasquez with negligent homicide. And the indictment stated that it was a dangerous felony because the offense involved the use of a motor vehicle and that they knew that there was going to cause infliction of serious bodily injury upon the victim, Hertzberg. The prosecutor involved in the case stated, distracted driving is an issue of great importance in our community. When a driver gets behind the wheel of a car, they have a responsibility to control and operate that vehicle safely and in a law-abiding manner. Vasquez is the first driver in human history to be liable for a pedestrian death involving an autonomous car. So in an accident involving an automated driving system, such as Uber's Volvo SUV, what are some of the tools investigators have at their disposal to piece together what actually happened that night? Well, these autonomous cars are not equipped with just one camera, but a dash camera system that includes a forward facing camera, an inward facing camera for monitoring the vehicle operator, they had a human machine interface like a tablet computer that enables interaction between the human in the vehicle and the, the automated system. Basically, the car is recording and monitoring the environment outside, around, and inside the SUV. And as the vehicle travels, the sensors continually scan the environment and monitor vehicle dynamics, thereby verifying the vehicle's position. And so the Uber, Uber's advanced technologies group was able to provide investigators with extremely detailed information. What was programmed before the trip? The data pertaining to the operator's interaction with the tablet, the videos recorded by the cameras, the sensor, the vehicle dynamics information, all the quantitative data recorded by the autonomous driving system during 
This was just a 39 uh, minute operation of the vehicle. So this data allowed investigators to identify the time the system detected the pedestrian, how the automated driving system predicted the paths to the pedestrian and the actions that the system took. And so this information is duplicated by what investigators could pull from the SUV's own event data recorder storage system, which records data immediately before and after the impact. So not only do we have data from this connected car that's connected to uh, the automated automotive manufacturer itself, but we have more and more surveillance on the roads from cameras above, from red light cameras, and also from the event data recorder itself. That's able to be able to, to let us know, such as in the uh, Tiger Woods crash, what happened immediately prior uh, to the crash itself. So this method of data collection during criminal investigations is soon gonna be routine as vehicles move from partially to fully automated. Because of this massive data collection, these cars with their own artificial intelligence have been inc become incredibly smart and will become even smarter as they learn from real life experience and simulations. Cars have evolved from having no automation, which is designated here as level zero on the SAE automation level, to partial automation, level two, where a driver has combined automated functions like acceleration and steering, to full automation, level five, where a vehicle is capable of performing all driving functions under all conditions, and the driver has the option to control the vehicle. Most autonomous vehicles now. Um, can individuals can purchase at about level two. So that would require a, someone physically present as a driver in the driver's seat. There are a few level three vehicles like the Audi 8 or the BMW iNext that the public can purchase, but even at a level three, a driver must be ready to take control of the vehicle at all times with notice. Some fleet cars, right, Lyft or Uber or trucking fleets are probably gonna be the ones that have first access to level five full automation vehicles because these automated driving systems are, are incredibly expensive and complex. So the question remains, how will the United States and the EU adjust to the autonomous age, right? Because what we see here is that surveillance and tracking tools such as GPS devices, license plate readers, traffic light cameras, vehicle radar, LIDAR, audio, and video recording devices and surveillance systems are much more intrusive, detailed, and comprehensive than ever before. And the government has access to where travelers are going, who is in the car, what are they doing in the car, and at what speed they're traveling, and at what time of day they choose to travel. Cars now contain their own artificial intelligence systems and their hardware and software, sensors, cameras, and radar. In fact, what we see here, uh, the police uh, autonomous vehicle, according to Ford's patent here that you see, that technology uh, is there that would be able to communicate with a remote central computing system to verify the legal speed for a given section of the road and then communicate with the offending vehicle and ask if it is driving autonomously or by a human operator and ask if it might provide a driver's license. Tickets would be issued remotely and a record of the incident would be sent to the police station or the Department of Motor Vehicles. Now more than ever, highway travel is heavily monitored and scrutinized. So what is the impact on uh, criminal prosecutions in the future now that there's so much data that we can find? Well, there's several things that we can uh, identify as far as the car data's impact in a level three world. What we can find is that evidence collected from an autonomous vehicle and presented to a jury is going to paint a more accurate picture of what had occurred at the time of the crash. Presumably during the criminal investigation of Rafaela Vasquez, police officers obtained a warrant to access all the data Uber's group collected from the Volvo SUV and to access the vehicle's uh, event data recorder. 
and warrants probably were more than likely issued to obtain cell phone information to show that she accessed Hulu and was watching The Voice while in the driver's seat. How is a jury gonna feel about such data? Is the data more accurate than an eyewitness? I mean, studies and research have shown eyewitness testimony is incredibly persuasive when put in front of the jury, yet also incredibly unreliable. Our memories fade quickly over time and our minds tend to fill in the gaps and are amenable to an officer's subtle suggestions. So it may seem obvious that introducing digital evidence, displaying the speed of the vehicle, how the autonomous vehicle processed the data at the time of the crash and what the driver was doing using cameras and sensors in the car would seem accurate and reliable in a jury's eyes, maybe more reliable in an eyewitness's memory. Digital data does not fade over time. It's collected, stored, and retained for however long the car manufacturer wants to keep it. But prosecutors are gonna to have to be careful as to chain of custody issues that might arise since the data is either stored by the auto manufacturer or another third party provider. And the digital data tells the story from the perspective of that particular camera, that particular sensor or vehicle function. It doesn't tell the whole story. So digital data and other sources can slowly piece together what happened at the crash, but only circumstantially. So we have to make, be careful not to jump to conclusions just because of one camera's video footage or one vehicle's functions perspective. But I will say that digital data from an autonomous vehicle is gonna be far superior to any other accident reconstruction tool out there. The days of relying on tire swerve marks and dirt tracks and interviewing witnesses to prove what happened will be over in a level three world. Another thing to think about is that humans may still be held criminally liable in a level three conditional automation and probably even in a level five fully automated driving world. I mean, Vasquez was in a fully autonomous vehicle, yet she was still criminally charged with negligent homicide. Will human beings remain liable for traffic accidents as humans slowly turn over driving controls to autonomous vehicles and their artificial intelligence? Certainly in a level three conditional automated world, the driver is still going to be held criminally responsible because the driver must be ready to take control of the vehicle at all times with notice. In Vasquez's case, the vehicle was fully automated, but it was essentially in training and needed the driver to have the option uh, to control the vehicle if the vehicle failed to detect and identify objects on the road. So we will going to ask ourselves, was the driver not paying attention and therefore negligent when the car hit the pedestrian? In other accident scenarios, the investigator must determine whether the driver intended to run past the stop sign or was reckless when speeding in a thunderstorm and sending a text message. And in a level five world, there is no driver and all humans become simply passengers in the vehicle. An accident would quite frankly be the autonomous vehicle's fault or the manufacturer who created a faulty design. So perhaps common traffic violations like speeding or running a red light or a stop sign would be things of the past since autonomous vehicles would be programmed to follow traffic laws. Another thing to consider is that we should expect more traffic accidents and criminal prosecutions in a level three conditionally automated world as human drivers become complacent as AV systems take over most of the driving. I mean, one of the greatest concerns we face moving from level three to level five automation is that impact on a human driver's capacity to pay attention and not be drawn into becoming too complacent or negligent in their driving responsibilities. I mean, we've seen this phenomenon where people can't wait to turn over the driving controls to their autonomous vehicle on several recent accidents involving autonomous vehicles. There was one in 2016, um, when the owner was killed in a Tesla Model S with autopilot uh, capabilities when the car hit a tractor trailer at a highway intersection. They, the NTSB had investigated the, trash, the crash and found that the sensors on the car failed to distinguish a large white 18 wheel truck and trailer crossing the highway. It thought it was some big overhead road sign. So what we see is humans really, some of us, maybe want to tune out the world and give the driving responsibility to the autopilot system 
but we have to be careful because human driving drivers may become much more negligent as they accede many of their driving duties to the car. And it's difficult to pay constant attention when we're actively driving, much more so when we're not actively engaged in driving activities. So there's no doubt that autonomous vehicles will significantly decrease the amount of traffic accidents and deaths on the road. However, it's important for us to see if that humans, if they're given so few driving tasks, are not simply capable of paying attention. Should we criminally prosecute human, humans driving level three to level five autonomous vehicles for negligent driving? Would a reasonable person in a level three autonomous vehicle have been able to pay attention? The last thing I'd like to point out is this, that society and legislatures must decide whether enforcement of traffic laws is necessary and advantageous as we advance from a level three to a level five fully automated world. You know, as technology and AVs and traffic enforcement improves, we must evaluate the impact officer discretion has had on the enforcement of traffic laws. No longer will police need to see, sit on the side of the road and wait for speeders. As you can see, speeding tickets can be automatically issued by electronic radar detectors placed on poles and traffic signs, or the, as the forward patent shows, where cars can communicate with each other. Are legislators gonna view these automated sanction mechanisms differently in the future? Do we as a society want all traffic violations monitored and processed by cameras, sensors, and radars and issued on a daily basis? If an AI's mission is to collect evidence and capture traffic and parking violations, violators, there'll be no discretion. And perhaps the thousands of tickets issued each day will create a revenue boom for many underfunded towns and cities. Or uh, individuals may want, uh, May, may eliminate all strict liability traffic laws. And, and maybe we might have only prosecute those that require a culpable mental state like negligent or, re or reckless driving. This is a very real possibility as many of these traffic tickets for speeding, illegal parking, running red lights will be irrelevant as human drivers are replaced with level five full automation. So in conclusion, what we see is that humans have indicated they want to live in a level five fully automated driving world. M many of us would prefer to watch a movie or text or sleep in the car rather than drive. Some have already tricked a car into autopilot. And in a level five world, there's going to be perhaps less pollution, less traffic congestion. Presumably the worlds will be safer. And it's also possible that criminal liability in a level five fully automated world where humans are simply passengers in the autonomous vehicle will shift to the car manufacturers. You know, criminal laws haven't been designed to punish autonom autonomous vehicles with artificial intelligence, but rather set forth punishments and penalties to ensure that unacceptable human behavior doesn't happen again. So if the AV design is flawed, the programmers and manufacturers are at fault and may be held criminally liable. And as far as all that data that's being collected, the best compromise that can be made is to require law enforcement to obtain a warrant for all data in the hands of the car companies and on the event data recorder and continue to allow law enforcement to monitor the roads externally without any limitations unless it's long-term monitoring. We must assume that everything we do inside our cars will be observed by our car company and with a warrant if it's a criminal investigator. Car companies are constantly collecting data to feed the AI. So will level five autonomous vehicles become commonplace? Well, one thing is for certain, our cars will certainly be watching us, listening to us and learning from our past mistakes. <laughs>